Hello, I am Heike Lanky, the Chief Executive of Forbase Buyer UK Societas, or Forbase Buyer for short. Before I introduce the company, um, our business and business strategy, um, I thought I would perhaps say a little bit more about myself first. I'm a qualified bioengineer, uh, originally born in Belgium, and I've now settled in the UK since uh, leaving uh, to do PhD in Cambridge in 2001. My background is in business, having set up my own company in my first company in 2003. And since then, I've been building and selling companies, most notably in 2020 when David, uh, our CFO, and I, as chief executive of uh, Expedient AG at the time, managed and successfully concluded a 120 million euro disposal of certain business assets to AppCam. This represented a three times return on capital invested over a three year period. So now let me tell you more about Forbase Bio. We are a UK company based near Cambridge, which was spun out of Forbase Bio AG in December last year. Our former parent, Forbase Bio AG, is a German life sciences company listed on the Frankfurt main market. And as you can see, we currently still carry the same name. Therefore, to avoid any confusion in the future, the German entity, Forbase Bio AG, will be changing its name to To Invest AG. Our focus at Forbase Bio is broadly in the gene therapy space and specifically in the development of next generation synthetic DNA, which is a key component of gene therapies, but also in the development of non-viral delivery systems, again used in gene therapies to deliver the genetic payloads to target tissues and cells in patients. So our primary focus is not to develop the gene therapy itself, but to provide the essential components of it. We see real shareholder value in the business proposition, which I'll talk more about in the following slides. But before I do that, let me explain a little about the company. The first question you might have is why are we a UK Societas and not a PLC? The legal structure is fundamentally the same, but Forbes Bio was originally incorporated in Germany as a European stock corporation. This meant the seed could easily be moved to the UK, which is actually what happened in December last year. Following Brexit, however, European stock corporations are no longer recognized in the UK, and hence our legal status was automatically converted to a UK stock corporation, a UK Societas, which we plan to convert to a PLC following shareholder approval at our next AGM. Now, you might also ask why the company was spun out of its German parent. Well, in 2019, Forbes by AG, or Expedient AG before its name change, was focused primarily on the life sciences tools and reagent market, and in particular on the proteomics and immunology sector with some genomics assets as well. As I briefly mentioned earlier, in January 2020, Forbes by AG sold its proteomics and immunology business to Cambridge-based AppCamp PLC for 120 million euros, whilst retaining its genomics business. The genomics business was and remains early stage, and we realized that a sale at that time would have been premature and would not have generated the valuation we believe can be achieved with further investment. So then, during 2020, the decision was taken to split the cash assets of Forbes Bio AG, which obviously came from the AppCamp transaction, from its remaining operating activities. Those remaining activities, i.e. the genomics business, as well as 16 million euro in cash and a 25 million euro debt facility, was spun out into Forbes by UK Societas on the 8th of December 2020. And moving forward, Forbes by UK Societas will now pursue the genomics operating activities previously held by its former German parent. So, a long story short means that Forbes by will now become a fully independent, aimless company focused on the exploitation of those genomics assets. Despite its apparent German origins, Forbes Bio really is a UK Spanish entity. As I mentioned at the beginning, our head offices are near Cambridge, where we have a 12,000 square feet facility, which we own, and where we currently employ 12 people and where the senior management team is located. In addition, we also have a research laboratory in Madrid, where we employ another 12 staff. So a listing in the UK fits with the operational footprint of the business. But we also feel that AIM is the right market for us, given our current size, shape, and the growth prospects of the company. As I said before, the company is focused on exploiting its genomics assets. So what are those assets? I briefly explained that our focus is the development of next-generation synthetic DNA and the development of non-viral delivery systems, both of which are used in gene therapies and gene vaccines. Let me explain the synthetic DNA piece first, and then I'll go on to talk about non-viral delivery systems. In looking at synthetic DNA, our Spanish facility is actually very important. 
The origins of our Spanish business sit in the center of molecular biology of the University of Madrid, in particular the research groups of Luis Blanco and Marguerite Salas, who sadly passed away last year. Both, however, are internationally revered scientists who have penned many peer-reviewed publications. The company has capitalized on the center of excellence and has acquired many years of experience of working with and enhancing enzymes which can copy DNA quickly and accurately. This essentially forms the core of our intellectual property portfolio around copying or synthesis of DNA. Now, our particular approach to DNA synthesis is very new, with only Forbase Bio and two other companies that we know of in the early stages of developing and commercializing this type of technology. And what's incredibly exciting about this way of making DNA is one that the, the product we make is extremely suitable for gene therapies, which require a lot of DNA, but also that it solves a lot of the production problems with the current way DNA is made. Forbase Bio owns proprietary technology assembled under the True Prime trademark, which enables Forbase Bio to synthesize large quantities of DNA quickly, cost effectively, and safely. The DNA we create is called HBDNA, hairpin DNA or high performance DNA which reflects the structure and the quality of the product we make. We say synthetic DNA, and the synthetic piece is very important. Currently, DNA is made through biofermentation. That is to say, the DNA of interest is inserted into a bacteria in the form of a plasmid, which is a circular bacterial type of DNA. The bacteria are then fermented or grown in large stainless steel vessels in order to achieve greater and greater amounts of bacteria and hence plasma DNA. This requires very large biofermentation facilities with vessels as large as 10,000 liters. Once the bacteria containing the plasma DNA are grown, the DNA then needs to be purified. This means several steps to eliminate the many unwanted bacterial components, which eventually leaves you with an end product, which is the plasma DNA of interest. The purification step is essential as growing bacteria generates large quantities of contaminants such as endotoxins, which are harmful to humans and must be removed. So overall, biofermentation is expensive and time consuming with safety considerations paramount. In contrast, similar amounts of synthetic DNA can be produced in vessels 1000 the size. And because bacteria are not used to synthesize the DNA, there are also no endotoxins to be worried about. And hence the process is comparatively inexpensive and super quick. We believe therefore that synthetic DNA is a hugely exciting opportunity given its clear advantages and unique selling points over current methods of manufacturing DNA in terms of speed, cost and safety. So where are we in terms of our development? I've explained that our way of DNA manufacturing is relatively straightforward compared to the traditional methods, but I don't want to underplay the complexities of commercializing this technology. And this is what we're currently trying to do. This means we need to achieve several milestones. First, we need to scale manufacturing to meaningful commercial levels. So one of our first targets is to achieve batch sizes of several grams. We also need to demonstrate that our DNA product works as well or better than plasma DNA in gene therapies. And finally, we need to demonstrate that we can produce DNA to clinical grade and satisfy regulators our product is produced to stringent quality requirements, so-called GMP grade DNA. Currently, we have demonstrated the ability to copy DNA in quantities and quality suitable for preclinical research. We are now in the process of working on those other aspects. In practice, this means we are redesigning and refining the manufacturing processes to enable efficient commercial production, while simultaneously we are working to confirm our DNA can be packaged effectively into gene therapy vectors, i.e. the viral and non-viral delivery systems, in a way which is again comparable or better than plasma DNA. We are doing a lot of this product validation work through a combination of in-house work alongside partnering agreements and contract work. And finally, we are developing processes to ensure consistent and reliable clinical grade production of DNA. As I said, we are really excited about the commercial opportunity. We are looking to supply products into a very rapidly growing market with the gene therapy and DNA vaccine market expanding at compound rates of about 36% per annum and regulators are expecting a surge in approvals over the coming years. Moreover, the existing supply of plasma DNA is heavily constrained due to a lack of global production and building new biofermentation facilities is a slow and very expensive process. Yet, the demand for DNA continues to grow significantly. Our objective is therefore to offer a safer, higher performance and more cost-effective alternative to plasma DNA. So that is the DNA part of our strategy. 
But as I mentioned, we are also investing in the development of non-viral delivery systems for use in gene therapies. And I would like to explain that a little bit more. In order to create a gene therapy, you need to identify a gene of interest. That gene of interest is then produced uh, in scale through gene or DNA synthesis, but that's not enough. You also need to find a way to deliver that gene of interest, the therapeutic agent, to the right place in the patient's body for which you need a delivery system, often referred to as the vector. Currently, the market for gene delivery systems is dominated by viral vectors, that is to say viruses, which have been engineered to be harmless, but also carry the gene therapy payload. However, alongside viral vectors, there are also a broad range of non-viral based delivery systems. These non-viral vectors are currently not as well developed or used in the clinic as viral vectors, but are gaining more and more traction. An example of this, for instance, is the Moderna COVID vaccine, which is a non-viral delivery method with RNA coding for the coronavirus spike protein as payload. We strongly believe that non-viral vectors can address some of the challenges which face viral vectors and can represent a next generation in delivery systems. For instance, unlike the popular viral AAV vectors, non-viral delivery systems can deliver larger genes into the body. Moreover, non-viral based delivery methods typically do not create an immune response, whereas the immune response to a virus normally compromises the second administration of a particular viral vector and with it the gene therapy. This means that non-viral vectors can be used for gene therapies which might benefit from repeat dosing and can be used in those therapies where viral vectors struggle to cope with the size of the gene payload. So where are we in terms of the delivery technology? We have identified technologies which we believe have strong commercial potential and we see very clear opportunities to build intellectual property in the area of non-viral vectors. We have already established a team and laboratory in the UK focused on the development of non-viral delivery technology, which we have branded Hermes, and which we intend to use for delivery of payloads. Alongside this, we have also signed several partnerships agreements with academic research groups working on non-viral delivery solutions. And we expect that through these activities, we will generate additional intellectual property and delivery solutions suitable for gene therapy applications. As we develop this technology, our aim is to combine those non-viral delivery systems with our synthetic DNA. And we believe by working in partnerships with others, we can also go one step further into early stage gene therapy discovery. As part of our business plan, we plan to develop at least a proof of concept and possibly further potential gene therapies for a limited number of indications. We can achieve this by working with academic groups who have identified genes of interest for specific conditions and take the lead on the development and manufacture of the DNA payload and the non-viral vectors which can deliver that gene into the target cells. Our commercial ambitions therefore are to one, manufacture synthetic DNA, i.e. the HB DNA for sell to third parties. Two, to develop and manufacture non-viral delivery systems, i.e. the Hermes nanoparticles, for sale or licensing to third parties. And finally, to identify a number of indications for which we can progress potential gene therapies through early stage preclinical validation, at which point we would expect either to license or sell that gene therapy candidate to an interested party. In summary, we see significant commercial opportunities in both our DNA technology and non-viral nanoparticles, the picture for which is summarized on this page. We own proprietary next-generation technology that enables us to make synthetic HP DNA, which has clear USBs over plasma DNA in terms of safety, performance, and cost. Our objective is to supply our DNA products for incorporation in viral and non-viral vectors used in gene therapy and DNA vaccines. We also intend to develop our Hermes non-viral delivery system, which offer our potential customers an alternative to AAV-based solutions and opens up the opportunity to explore the delivery of larger genes and repeat dosing strategies. Our ambition over time is to build a successful life sciences company, which is highly profitable. But if we are successful in developing this technology portfolio, we believe significant value will rest in those technologies well before break-even or profitability is achieved. If you are familiar with this space, you will see that significant transactions have occurred where large pharma and others have bought smaller companies with promising technology, where on the face of it, the valuation of the company is not reflected in the reported profitability. And if we are successful in the execution of our business plan, we believe this route to securing shareholder value is quite likely. Turning from this to the structure and management of the company, Forbase Bio has a board of two executives and four non-executive directors. 
I am, of course, the chief executive, and David is our CFO. He and I were the previous management board of Forbase Bio AG, and we were responsible for building the company and concluding the AppCam transaction, as I mentioned in my introduction. Sitting alongside us is our chairman, Tim, who is deeply experienced in the UK capital markets and life sciences company. Joe has many years of experience in life sciences and is a scientist by background, but is also commercially highly successful, including his own company, Active Motif. Pilar and Hans Jörg are from Spain and Germany, respectively, reflecting the international makeup of our shareholder base and previously served on the supervisory board of Forbase Bio AG. Perhaps a few words on the capital structure of the company. We currently have 12.3 million shares in issue. Um, the former parent, Forbase Bio AG, continues to hold a 30% stake in the company. Deutsche Balaton, a German investment house, holds around 20%, while the board of directors has a combined stake of approximately 16%. So what can you expect to see in terms of our financial results and performance in the near term? As you can see, Forbase Via has ambitious plans, which the company is well funded to deliver. As part of the spin-out process, Forbase Via secured approximately 14.4 million of cash funding. It also has a credit line with Forbase Via AG for a further approximately 22 million pounds, if required. Although there are no plans to use this facility at the moment. In the near term, we will invest in line with the business strategy outlined above. The company does generate several hundred thousand pounds of revenue, which relate to the sale of kits for research and enzymes for diagnostic purposes. These revenue streams, however, are incidental to the main focus of our business, and we do not see the revenue as a key performance indicator for the business at this time. So while the company does have modest revenues, we expect to invest significantly more in the development of our technologies, and as a result, we will incur significant losses in the near term. We do not consider the quantum of these losses to be a key indicator, although of course we are working to budgets and we closely monitor our expenditure. We think the important milestones for investors are non-financial, and these center on, on one, the, the validation work, two, the scaling, and finally the partnering. As we progress through those stages, we will keep the market informed on those developments. So thank you for listening. Forbase by UK Societies is extremely well placed to take advantage of the gene therapy market trends from which to build significant shareholder value, both with our synthetic DNA and non-viral delivery systems. We see that this can create significant shareholder value over time through the sale of HPDNA and Hermes nanoparticles and also our intention to progress certain gene therapy indications through proof of concept. So thank you once again, and please visit our website, forbasebio.com, to learn more about our business and our technologies.